Welcome to the fifth session for the series tutorials for page object model using Selenium WebDriver and Java. Today in this session we are going to see what is Fluent interface in page object model. So let's get started. We'll take the same example only. We'll take this application sourcedemo.com. We'll automate this test case like we fill the valid credentials, we pass the valid uh, username and password and we click on the login button and we make sure that uh, the user is able to see this message. Okay. Let me jump on the IntelliJ. I am just referring to the previous test case only which we created in the filter pattern. Just copy it and just changing the name to event interface and go to this package as well. And just make it as fifth event interface. that we are doing the right inputs home page let's import from the fifth one fluent interface import the class from okay. okay now what we have done basically we have created a login page class for these elements which we have on to the login page okay so the first part is we have defined our web elements like what all elements are required in this uh, for automating the test case we need this text box username for that we are using the id this is the locator this is one of the locator strategy which we have used to find the element for this text box password we are working with name this is another locator strategy and for button login we have written an own x one okay now the, the second part is we have defined our operations basically uh, like what do we want to perform with these web elements like for this username and uh, password text box we want to fill some values and just for this login button we want to perform the click operation right so in the last session we saw like what is design pattern like what is builder pattern basically so with the help of builder pattern i was able to write the code in such way so what was happening what is the difference actually between this builder pattern and viewing interfaces when we say builder pattern okay so that was about the operation with which we were performing onto the web element and we were on the same page for example if you were filling any value here inside this text box called username okay you are still on the login page itself right you cannot navigate it to any other page but what happens if you pass the valid credentials inside the username and then password and then click on the login button so we are navigated to what we are navigated to a different page this is something which we are calling it as a home page okay so <clears throat> this was the example of viral pattern right but in this case as well i what i had to do i had to create the object of this home page separately okay so let me just do one thing just take hold this part and maybe i can delete this just copy it and it and yes okay so <clears throat> Now what is the return type for this click button login home page itself right so you can use this home page here you can comment it down and now you see just a second we need to add it here return return what an object of what home page and I'm passing the driver reference because in the we have a parameterized constructor written there and just change the type of package. Now you can you go to there and you see we are able to remove this line as well. In the same <clears throat> in the same like on the line number 42 itself you are calling the methods from login page okay but as a return type from this button login click button login method this is the home page so this is what prevent interface is. Let me just try to execute this test case just to make sure that everything is working fine yeah. we have this test case 5 login pom and then the fluent interface what will it, what will it do like uh, with the help of this web driver manager we get the driver driver binaries for the chrome browser okay we navigate to the website we maximize the window and then we perform our test case test case is good Intentionally, if you are just if you are just putting the extra content in the expected message, 
Now let's just try to execute this test case once again. It should fail, right? You see, the test case code failed. We got the assertion error. Why? Because we intentionally put some data here, which was not supposed, which was not present on the web page. Okay. So in the next session, we will see like the, how can we handle the components, like the common components basically, okay, which we have across the application. They are not specific to any web page, but yeah, they can be present inside multiple pages. So where do we need to define them? and how exactly can we call them and use them in our test case. We'll see in the next session. That's all for this session. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.